us. And the flowers that belongs to all of us. Um, I've been receiving songs for many, many years, ever since I started studying at Course of Miracles. But uh, that has accelerated really since I met David here a little over a year and a half ago. And uh, so uh, as I share songs this afternoon, I'll share a couple here at the beginning, and David may be inspired to ask for a particular song according to what we're discussing this afternoon. I would ask that you sing the applause for the very end. <coughs> the Spirit uses um, these songs to build an atmosphere of reverence to help you go deeply within the mind. <coughs> um, you know, the songs have uh, quotes with them from the Post Miracles. And this one is The Holy Spirit is my only guide. He walks with me in love, and I give thanks to Him for showing me the way to go.
So uh, I thought what we would do is have uh, a request was made for a break after one hour and then another hour. And so that seems like the three hours is a nice breaking point. So we'll just take five minute breaks to stretch or go to the restroom, whatever you need to do. And uh, go forward. It is an honor to come together with you. It's such an honor always wherever I go in the country and the world and to come together with everyone and experience the present moment. And I don't really give sermons and I don't give talks, so I just go around and I just show up and let the Holy Spirit kind of take the thing. Um, we have a microphone here too since we're recording at, at uh, Kathy, would you come up and just sit right here? So if anybody has questions, uh, Kathy will just uh, bring the mic back a little ways to you. I think it will go way back. And uh, if it's only going so far, you might have to lean in from the far edges there. But I think you should be able to reach those people pretty well. Uh, what I want to talk today is about uh, enlightenment, uh, enlightenment, salvation. Just living in the present moment, free of any hurts or grievances and pains of the past, and also free of worries and concerns about the future, because those are the things that distract the mind away from the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is simply living in a state of perfect trust in the present moment. And so seemingly, the life of David over the last 12 years has been kind of more like Jesus and the apostles, as I've gone around uh, around and around, around the country and up to Canada and uh, this year, the, the world travels have begun. Uh, I didn't even have a passport, and so it came very quickly that I was going to be going to Argentina. So I said, I need one of those thingamajiggies. And I said, a passport, David. You've got to have a passport. And you'll need a visa for certain countries. But, oh, what's that? So, so I, I know that we'll master the visa card thing. But, so I kind of live in a state of, of joy, uh, and it's a very simple life of... Uh, of trust, and um, so I have lots of parables from the life of David and uh, from the people that I meet along the way, which are, you don't even have to make them up, I mean, they're just so miraculous that as you just tell tell the stories, that they really point to the presence of God, because uh, I've picked up a lot of hitchhikers, and sometimes people will, will say, what's it like to go from Course of Miracles gathering to course group to conferences and so forth. And I said, well, I'd miss the whole journey if I thought of it that way. It's, uh, most of the people I meet are are on the road in uh, rest areas and picnic areas and laundry mats and grocery stores and restaurants and so forth. And, and everyone is the Christ. Everyone is pure and whole and perfect. And when you get into the state of mind of living in the present, it's really fun because you get to meet yourself over and over. And you find that you're adorable <laughs> in all the ways that you that you find, you know, in uh, animals that greet you, or uh, people that greet you, or just when you're out in, uh, in nature, you know, just enjoying the lo the love and oneness of everything. And so, what I'm going to be speaking of is is a practical experience of how it is to live in the present moment. It's really the most natural experience that there could ever be. It's, it's, is given by God. Uh, it seems it seems extraordinary in this world only because it doesn't have any of the, this world's laws mixed in with it. So initially, when I was uh, uh, prompted to the hell to start traveling and shining my light and given my inner calling, uh, basically the, the instructions were the same ones that Jesus gave the apostles uh, about take no thought for what you should wear and eat and uh, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and trust everything else will be added. So as I've gone on this journey, uh, I wasn't allowed to bring anything with me. And, and that's been the fun part because I didn't have uh, a means of starting off. I didn't have money in the bank. I didn't have organizational support. I didn't have a network. I didn't have anything that the world would say is important if you're going to you know, start traveling. And, uh, Kind of like maybe like Peace Program when she first started her walk, you know, after a few years, everybody's, here she comes, there we get ready. But I mean, when you first start out, it's kind of like, here we go, we're going to wing it with God. <laughs> you don't have all the contacts or whatever. 
And so that's really the way it has been for me. And the simple thing was, I was told, you know, freely you have received, now freely give. And when he says freely give, he means give it away for free. That you can charge money for lots of things in this world, but enlightenment and salvation is not one of them. Because it is a free gift from God. And so what came along with that instruction was, uh, whatever I do, seemingly counseling or workshops or however people would call it, talks, uh, and then later on videotapes and pamphlets and journals and on and on and on and on. Give it away. Uh, kind of like this old Swedenborgian uh, minister, Johnny Appleseed. Fling the seeds. Don't even look to where those seeds land. Just go out there and fling them. Fling them in every direction. And uh, you'll find that the joy of living is in the flinging. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not looking where they land, like the parable in the Bible about whether they land in the good soil, the fertile soil, or in the thorns, or among the thistles, or whatever. You know, the joy is in the flinging. So my experience is, in that sense, um, Jesus dictated a, a song of prayer, and uh, he was saying in the idea in there is whenever you make a demand on anyone, whenever you want anything from a brother, you will see him as a brother no longer. So you can see where this is going. That living in the present moment is giving as God gives, freely without any expectations, no reciprocity, no contracts, no bargains. No exchange. In this world, it's almost unheard of because this whole world was built on the ideas of duality and reciprocity and exchange. And everything, from the family system to the corporations to the churches, to it, it cuts across through the fabric of, of the human experience is this thing of exchange. You know, I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. <laughs> All the markets <laughs> was redefining that this morning in the car, and the van, uh, I'll scratch my back, you scratch your back, and you can scratch my back too if you want. <laughs> we had some marketisms coming forth this morning in the, in the van as we were driving around. But basically, the, the way the world works is it's set up to be bargains and contracts. I mean, it, it, even marriage is, you know, seen as a marriage contract. Nowadays, with the wealthy people, you know, they have the prenuptial agreements and on and on and on. And it's, you know, that's seen as as prudent and safe, you know, to sign a, a prenuptial agreement about the future. You know, what will, how will things be divided in the future? And the Course says that you agree to meet, but you always give yourself an out to separate whenever you choose. You, know, you agree to meet, but you can always separate. So even in this world, where there's this concept of marriage, of coming together, uh, where two become one, there's always the written or the unwritten thing, like, just remember, I picked you out of the three billion, <laughs> and I've always got an option here. I've always got a clause, a release clause. And the Holy Spirit is saying, if you'll follow me, I will show you how to release the release clause, to let go of the belief that you can part to see that you are always joined and, and when God is joined together in creation, no man can put this on. You cannot divide or fragment what God created as one. So most of the Course is written at the metaphorical level of you and your brother as if there are two parts, of private minds and there are, everyone has private minds with private thoughts. But the Course is aiming at an actual experience at the present moment in which there are no parts, it's just all whole. And everything is literally one, very, very literally one, not even holographic, which is, we were talking, Carrie brought up today, where every part contains the whole. That still involves part-whole thinking. And enlightenment is just a state of perfect wholeness, where you see that the present moment is all that there is. So it's really fun, because when you do anything in this world, and you're living in the present moment, you don't have any reference point. It's like you're meeting everything and everyone for the very first time, with no memory of a past. And that's why there's no grievances, and that's why there's no concerns. <laughs> you know, so it's almost kind of like like dementia or Alzheimer's, <laughs> in the sense that, except it's a functional uh, dementia or functional Alzheimer's, where it's, it's like reverse amnesia, where this world was made to forget the present moment, and when you get into enlightenment, you forget the linearity 
that was the illusion, and you're left with the here and now, which is the, the closest approximation to eternity, Jesus says. The present moment is the closest approximation to eternity. So, here I am. I've just showed up, and I have fun at these things because uh, everyone is uh, so uh, expressive, and we have a lot of joy, and I invite you to ask uh, any questions or share any experiences that you're having uh, because it's the Holy Spirit orchestrating the whole gathering, and there's no real person or personalities uh, that are really involved in it. It's just a matter of allowing your mind to feel the love that's always bathing us. It's just basking over us and shining on us always. And um, there aren't any uh, smart questions or dumb questions or, or good ones or bad ones. And uh, I see everybody from the state of enlightenment. So everybody's a sweetie. Uh, it doesn't matter where I go in the world, whether I can seek to speak the language or not, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, plants or animals or people or whatever. I don't see anybody who's behind or ahead. I don't I don't see evolutionary stuff. I don't see process anymore. The process was was really the, the denial of the instant. And the instant is just the acceptance of what's always been true. So it's it's great that way in the sense that nobody's ahead, nobody's behind. Uh, I don't see this really as like pertaining to the Course in Miracles. I don't, I don't identify with the Course in Miracles. I, I seem to use it in the story of David, but it was all about just the desire, you know, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and mind. And it really doesn't have anything to do with, with a book or uh, a tool. Uh, and so now it's kind of fun because whether it's, you know, Course in Miracles, they call it, or Power of Now, or Conversations with God, or on and on and on. There's so many wonderful uh, pathways that people take to the present moment, that I enjoy just using the language and the lingo of the moment, whatever anybody seems to be uh, using that's meaningful. Uh, and I also, I, I always thought it was kind of funny because when people try to turn the course into kind of like groups and conferences and whatever, it's kind of like they talk about the Course in Miracles community as if there's a boundary around it. And I always thought, well, we're getting back to the, the Christians and the non-Christians and the and the Arabs and the Jews and all this and that. And, and it struck me recently when I said I was going up to Michigan to do a gathering and uh, I asked about a particular person in church and they said, oh, don't go there. They don't even do the Course in Miracles anymore. They're falling away Course in Miracles. And that really struck me because I thought, here it goes. <laughs> the ego doesn't care what it's going to use. You know, it's always going to try to, you know, say somebody fell off of something or fell off the wagon or broke off of something, as if you could break away from who you are. You know, if you're always who you are and we're all, uh, this, this was a unity church, the Masonic temple that was a unity church this morning and now they fall away all the signs and <laughs> here we are, just, just us uh, living in the oneness. So, so I open it up to everybody because that's what these things are really. It's just kind of like question and answer where um, if you want to bring something up, uh, it's my joy to go into it with you. And what we're doing is, of course, is removing the obstacles to what's already here and now. So uh, it's really a very uh, reverent, profound kind of thing, even though it seems to involve words. Uh, usually these gatherings kind of reach a point of stillness where we're all just doing little eye gazing at the end <laughs> because the words, you know, are just like little, little stepping steps. So welcome. And anybody has anything they want to... Uh, Question or talk about? Here we go. Thanks, Roger. It's great to be here. I really get to know the pressure. It's talking about pressure. Present moment. I've uh, been married to a lady in Canada, and uh, we're uh, going to finalize our divorce in September, September the 5th, and it's been a very difficult journey uh, the last year getting to that place. Uh, and uh, it's held me up completely from starting my business that I almost start. Uh, I've patents on some tools that I've invented. 
this morning about your comments and be on you. I pray a lot about it every day. And for her home, a small beat, because I know it's going to be a tremendous strain on her. Uh, more dangerous to her than it is to me, I believe. And, um, Relationships uh, are always very purposeful and uh, always the maximal amount of unlearning, I call it, that can occur in a relationship uh, does occur. And so um, a lot of times when there's a lot of emotions you know, or emotional baggage that's tied in with it and it feels like it's weighing you down and distracting you from things that you really want to be on with, do get on with in your life, um, uh, in the simplest way I can say it is that uh, there's past associations that are still being held on to. And it seems in this world that past associations have meaning. And you might say that the whole awakening process or the whole awakening is uh, the undoing of the ego or the letting go of these associations and learning, coming to this experience that you're perfectly cared for every single instant, regardless of how things seem to be going in the script. Uh, it takes a lot of trust in the sense that um, a lot of times you first start to get in touch with this whole world was built, as the country western song says, looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> it was looking for divine, eternal love in form. So we could say that all of the relationships that are formed, we would call with family and peers and teachers and uh, siblings and partners, husbands and wives and everything, would be what the Course calls specialness. That this world was built on specialness. It was an attempt to find love and intimacy in form, instead of looking within, the kingdom of heaven within, into the, the abstract experience of love and light within. So as you seem to go inward and start to loosen from these things, um, uh, there are things like divorces, uh, partings of ways, uh, whether it's with parents and children or spouses or family, friends, and so on and so forth. And there's a line in the Course that Jesus says, uh, of all your beliefs, perhaps the strangest of all your beliefs is the belief that you can lose the ones that you love. And it's put in that context because that is a very deep-seated belief when you seem to go through a divorce. There's a sense of sometimes grief and loss and so on and so forth. Or it sounds like in your case it's just it feels more like your energy and your mind is, keeps being pulled back to something that you really like it to just go forward and uh, move on to uh, the business things at hand and so forth. So I think the most practical thing you can do is um, uh, be open, uh, be open to your guidance of what you feel is the next steps to take. And also be very open with, with your wife as you go through this, uh, just expressing the feelings. I mean, the most honest feeling that we can ever really express is a sense of just gratitude and appreciation for everyone in our life. Uh, in terms of even like a partner, they have reflected the unconscious beliefs that we're still being held on to that needed to be looked at. So they seem to act them out. And, and when you see things from that perspective, you can feel a sense of gratitude. Not that the relationship is ending or not for specific memories, but just for this mirroring that went on because Everything that you perceive in a brother, in a partner, in a child, in an adult, of any relationship in this world is just a reflection of what you still believe is in your own mind. And I always say, if you spot it, you got it. So it's a, it's a simple way to remember to come back to that gratitude and, and really bless them and say, thank you for being my life and thank you for acting out what I still believe in that was out of my awareness. Thank you for helping bring it into my awareness so that I can give it over to the Holy Spirit and, and be free, and we, must, we all can be free from it. And that just brings a sense of gratitude. Uh, recently, uh, I shared a story, uh, and the rest of it, I mean, I mean, was it a little bit over a year ago, or it was back in the 20 months or something. Uh, she 
We've been married for 33 years, and she was a, a chaplain at Unity for Unity Church and um, on the board of directors and was a part-time grant writer. And then quickly, uh, those things just flew away from her mind. And uh, not only did all those things kind of fly away, like, like butterflies taking off, uh, but she was, she was like saying she couldn't even hardly even remember or, re- or bring them back into memory. <laughs> And it seems that can seem pretty radical, but actually it's actually very natural when you start to get into the present moment because you become so much into purpose and joy that everyone you meet is yourself, and those affiliations and associations and uh, I'll call them past associations that seem to define who you were, they just start to loosen and loosen, and initially you think I'm more than I thought I was. <laughs> I surprised myself. <laughs> I have a little more movement here. I have a little more uh, opening. You feel more, more expansive, like your consciousness is just expanding and expanding as you get more into divine purpose. And so that's something that I would say is that as this is occurring and you're being guided to the next step, you know, this is a time of celebration. And uh, you could feel the gratitude for your wife for all the things that you've shared, all the joy that you've shared, also all the stuff that got mirrored, and you can allow yourself the freedom to just say, okay, Holy Spirit, what's the next uh, next step in this joyful awakening, then you're really in good, uh, in good shape.